Hallmark Hall of Fame, the film series above all others, acclaimed by critics, winner of over 125 awards, and loved by millions, is now available on video. The greatest stories, the biggest stars, the best movies. Hallmark Hall of Fame, bringing the best to your home on video today. Hallmark Hall of Fame, who brought you Sarah Plain and Tall and Skylark, proudly present the third installment of this highly acclaimed collection, Sarah Plain and Tall, Winter's End, starring Glenn Close, Christopher Walken, and Academy Award winner Jack Palance. The year is 1918, amidst hard times. The war, this influenza. And bitter cold. We're in God's hands on every front. Sarah reaches out to a stranger in need. Thank you, Mrs. Whitting. Well, Sarah is fine, but I don't know your name. My name is John Whitting. John Whitting is dead. While Jacob struggles to welcome him. Jacob, who is this? It's my father. Now comes Sarah's greatest challenge. I could forgive him dying, but I can't forgive him walking away. To bridge the gap between a father and a son. I'm sorry, Jacob. Any man would be proud to call you his son. Discover the true meaning of family with Sarah Plain and Tall, Winter's End, available on video for only $14.98. Also enjoy Sarah Plain and Tall and Skylark, each sold individually for $14.98. Or own all three with this special VHS collector's pack, all for only $39.98. For the first time ever, enjoy all three films in one DVD collector's pack for only $34.98. For more information, log on to our website at www.familyhomeent.com. Brought to you by Hallmark Hall of Fame. Distributed by Family Home Entertainment, a division of Artisan Entertainment.
took the guide rope down, Papa. It's cold, but there's not a sign of snow. It's good, Caleb. I hope the winter's over. I hope so, too. You want coffee? Who made it? I did. Maybe I'll have some milk instead. Where's Sarah? She's upstairs. I hope you get sister packed for town. I wish you'd reconsider and stay a while longer. It can't be wise to be around so much sickness. I've been helping for months, and I haven't gotten anything. Some people just don't. And Dr. Sam depends on me. <sighs> Justin's letters. I've kept them all ever since he's been at war. When I read them, it's like he's standing next to me. Letters have that power. I know you and Papa worry, but I'll be fine. This is what I want to do. All right. You're all grown up. When did that happen? made some fresh rolls for Sam. You can take some with you. He'd be disappointed if I ever came back without something from your kitchen. Oh, well, he's putting you up, training you. It's the least I can do. Keep a few for us. We like your rolls, too. Oh, God, there's enough. There's plenty. Don't worry. Something wrong? I thought I saw someone. Well, it's probably one of Cassie's imaginary playmates. <laughs> You want me to stop by Mrs. Parkley's? Yeah. I need some wool. A couple of other things. <laughs> <laughs> List on the table. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're leaving soon. Don't go far. Nine. Don't worry. This won't take long. Ten. Ready or not, here I come. <laughs> I hear Nickel. I'm gonna find you, Cass. Cassie. Nickel, hush. Nickel, hush. Cassie. Is that your name? Cassie. I'm gonna find you. You can't hide for long. Can you tell me, what is your father's name, Cassie? Papa. Cassie. What is his name? Your papa's. Jacob. Found you, pal. <laughs> Jacob. There's a man behind the barn, and he's wearing a green blanket. You and your stories just jump at you and say, boo. <laughs> now, if you start to feel ill, you'll telephone us. I promise. All right. I'll miss you, Anna. You won't miss me for long this time. I'll be home for Easter. <laughs> will you write me a letter? I will, and you can show me pictures. You'll be back before dark? As soon as I pick up that tractor hitch, Jess is fixing it. Stop by May Parkley's. I'll be on my way. Oh, oh Caleb, I have something for you. Oh. An empty book? Fill it while I'm away. But I'm not a writer, like you. Where do I start? <laughs> On the first page. You'll figure it out. Caleb Charles! Come on in.
certainly am glad to have you back. <laughs> Hello, Jacob. Sir, you're tired. Only because I am. Every time she goes home for a few days, I realize how lucky I am to have her. She does a work of five. Yeah. How's Mrs. McKenzie doing? The fever broke in the night, and I think she'll pull through this. She asked for you. That's a good sign. Be sure it's safe for Anna to be around so much sickness. Papa. We take every precaution. A father worries. Your father worries over you the way I worry about Justin in Europe. You heard from him lately? There's a letter in my office. Thank you. He's doing as well as he can, I suppose. Mostly he writes of coming home to Anna. He does love her. I'm sure of that. The war has to end soon. I pray for it. The war, this influenza. We're in God's hands on every front, it seems. Oh, that's very nice. Colorful and original. The wind has kicked up. Wind in Kansas, imagine that. What's that? It's colorful and original, Mama said. Is it Papa? It's the man I saw. With her imagination, I think Anna should have given her the book to write in. It was a man. And you are so stubborn. Thank you. Is that the barn door? Caleb? I thought I shut it. I'll go take care of it. Hurry up. Supper's almost ready. Wow. Where did you come from? <coughs> Who are you? Uh, I'll be right back. Did you say where he was headed? He didn't say anything at all. I'm Sarah Whitting. This is our farm. Are you sick? Just tired. There's a lot of influenza about. I can't risk the health of my children. I'm not sick. I've been traveling and, and I'm chilled to the bone. Well, with only that blanket in this weather, I'm not surprised. Help me. We'll take you to the house. I can't ask. You don't have to ask. Oh. Oh. Why don't you sit here? Where it's warm. Caleb, there's some hot tea on the table. Will you pour me? I told you there was a man. That you did, Cass. Sorry. Oh. There you are. You don't have a fever. No. Is there someone waiting for you? Should we let them know? There's no one. Well, why don't you just rest here when my husband comes back? Jacob. Oh, you know him. Did you come to see him? I did. Well, that's odd. I don't remember him mentioning he was expecting someone. He wasn't expecting me. <sighs> well, he's taken our daughter into town. So there's an empty bed upstairs that you're welcome to. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Whitting. Now, well, Sarah is fine, but I don't know your name. John. My name is John. My name is Cassie. The dog is named Nickel. He's the son of Nick. We had a cat, too, but she died. She went out one night. Hush now. I think the man needs his rest. Kayla, would you please see him up to Anna's room? You can go up. Lie down. <laughs> Is. He's 
not a very good one. I knew you'd be in today, bringing Anna back to Dr. Sam's and all. You knew that, did you? Well, you listen, you hear things. I hope Sarah and the children are well. Fine, yeah, she has a list. Well, of course she does. And I'll take care of this for you right away. Oh, a letter came from Justin. Did Sam tell you? Yes, he did. <sighs> this terrible war, all those poor young men. But I guess we have our own battle these days, don't we? Mm. So much sickness. Nearly every home. Never seen it this cold so long. I don't think we'll have any more snow, but you never know. Uh, the wool, is there a color she's partial to? Gray. Green, blue. The colors of the sea. Blank page is so hard to fill up. No words seem right. Words will come. From where? Well, from what you see, what you feel, what you think, what you wish for. Hello? Oh, Jacob. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Well, we just finished supper. Oh, all right. All right. No, we'll be fine. Goodbye. Ah. Well, the tractor part won't be ready until the morning, so your papa is staying with Jess tonight. You didn't mention John. I completely forgot. <laughs> Maybe I should write a story on how we found him, and papa can read it later. Maybe so. He's asleep in Anna's bed. I was looking at him, his eyes blank. You leave him be. He needs his rest. Anna were here. She'd write a story on this. One winter's day, when the family was alone, a stranger came to the wedding farm. A robber. He is not a robber. Don't pretend. What do you think he wants with Papa? Well, I don't know. We'll find out in the morning. Right now, he needs sleep, not questions. Charming Billy. I, I have been to seek a wife. She's the joy of my life. She's a young thing and cannot leave her mother. Did she bid you to come in, Billy boy, Billy boy? Did she bid you to come in, Charming Billy? Yes, she, she bade, bade me to come in. in. There's, There's a, a dimple, dimple in her chin. She's, She's a young thing and cannot leave her mother. Did she set for you a chair? Billy boy, Billy boy. Did she set for you a chair, charming Billy? Yes, she set for me a chair. She has ringlets in her hair. She's a young thing and cannot leave her mother. Did she bake for you a pie, Billy boy, Billy boy? Did she bake for you a pie, charming Billy? <gasps> yes, she baked for me a pie. She's the apple of my eye. She's a young thing who cannot leave her mother.
Good morning. Morning. This is very good coffee. I'm glad you like it. That's Caleb's job. Well, he's taking care of the stock. I, I want to do my share. So you're feeling better this morning? Yeah. Good night's sleep. Works wonders. That it does. Morning, darling. What? Are you a robber? Cassie. No, I'm not a robber. How far did you travel yesterday? Um. The animals are all fed. Took care of your horse, too. Are you going to get ready for school? Or are you just going to stand there staring at John? I want to stare at John. <laughs> She's nothing if not honest. I can see that. Papa's home. I'll go see if he needs help. John, it's Jacob. Papa's home. Hello, Papa. Caleb, take that. Papa! Here's my girl. Oh. We missed you. Jess sends his regards. Uh, there's company here to see you. Did you miss me, too? Yes, Papa. What can I do for you? You don't recognize me? Have we met? A long time ago. I don't remember. Was it in town? No, there's no reason why you should remember. As, as I said, it was a long time ago. He's not a robber, Papa. <laughs> My name is John Whitting. Whitting? Are you related? John Whitting is dead. Is that what you thought? Caleb, could you take Cassie upstairs and help her to get dressed, please? Now. Now, please. I know. This must be a shock. Jacob, who is this? It's my father. Your father? But you always said... I said what I thought was true. Has Sarah made you comfortable? Is there anything you need? Your family has been very kind. Good. I have to feed Belle. She's hungry. Well, Caleb could do that. He's busy. Excuse me. Why didn't you tell me who you were last night? I wasn't sure I'd be welcome here. Why wouldn't my husband's father be welcome? That's a question you should ask Jacob. was dead. Well, clearly you were mistaken. He went away from here, from me and Mama, when I was a boy. 
younger than Caleb. Went away to what? To work? To war? Oh, I never know. One day he was here. He was Papa. The next. must have been a reason. A man just doesn't up and leave his family with no cause. This one did. So, you made him dead? Mama did that. It was easier, I guess, to think that than to believe that he'd... time. Why is he here? I can't answer that, but he certainly can. What's happening? I want to see. There's nothing to see. They're still in the barn talking. Hello, Grandfather. Oh, you heard. It'll be good to have a Grandfather. I'm not good, Caleb. Don't go thinking that. You're not a good man? Are you going somewhere? For a walk. Would you like Caleb to show you around? I'd be glad to do it. No, there's no need. I, I know the farm. It used to belong to me. I'm sure you know. Have you come back for long? We'll see. Well, he says he's taking a walk. I want to go, too. No, Cassie, I think he'd like to be alone. Is Papa happy grandfather's come home? Well, it's complicated. John, your grandfather, left when your Papa was only a little boy. It hurt him very badly. You can imagine how you'd feel if Papa left you. But Papa wouldn't leave. No, he wouldn't. But his papa did leave. And why? I don't know. Now, hurry up. Get your books. Get going. You're already late for school. Maine, a good fish chowder could always cut through the cold every winter night. But truth be told, I've grown partial to a good Kansas stew. Well, if it's ready, we should eat. We can't eat until Grandfather gets back. The food is hot, and we've eaten without him all these years. Years before you came. He's company, Jacob. I think we should wait. We were starting to worry. Did you have a good walk? I, I got turned around. I used to know every inch of this farm. When? Oh, I bought this land long before I married. I broke it, planted it, and worked hard to make it mine. Was it yours? It's the Whitting Farm, Jesse. Grace, Cassie. God is great, God is good, and we thank him for our food. Food? Food. I see you cleared the walnut trees to the west. I don't think I would have done that. It still looks fine, Sam. Do you like children? I don't know. 
know many. Do you like the ones you know? Cassie, that's enough. Do you like Papa? What I would like is for you to eat your supper. So, where have you come from? Excuse me? Where do you make your home now? Oh, nowhere. <laughs> I move around. This is the only place I, I ever called home, this... this house, this land. Oh, that must be Anna. Can I answer it, please? All right, quick. Hello? Anna, guess what? Grandfather was lost, but now he's back home, and he is not a good man. Do you remember when I first came here all those years ago? Not so many years. We walked along this fence, you and I. You showed me this land, your land. And there was such a feeling of pride when you spoke about it. I remember that. No one's ever going to take this away from you, Jacob. No one. It's yours to the end, and then you and I will give it to the children. Except maybe for Cassie. <laughs> Does she have to always speak her mind? <laughs> She hasn't been quiet five minutes since she was born. Yeah. That was winter, too, remember? She was so tiny. And so loud. Maybe. But I do so love that little opinionated girl of ours. The where she gets her stubbornness. I have no idea. I love you, Jacob. So much. You're a good husband, good father. Don't you think you should hear his side of it? What explanation could there be for abandoning your wife and child? I don't know, but I think we should try to find out. I'm not interested. You don't mean that. I know what I mean. I don't want them here. That's not fair to the children. They have so little family as it is, this chance to get to know their grandfather. Grandfather, by blood only. I can't forgive him, Sarah. I could forgive him dying, but I can't forgive him walking away. I want him to go. This is not fun. <sighs> Your mama probably doesn't like it either. I'm writing about you in my journal, Grandfather. I can't see that you've got much to write about. It would be easier if I knew more. There's nothing you need to know, Caleb. That's my business. I don't mean to pry. Then don't. Little. She doesn't do much. She plays with marbles and draws pictures. I drew one of you. She plays hide and seek. 
That's a good idea. Go hide. You have to count first. One, two, three. Slower. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you have to go find her. You find her. I'm coming. Imagine she liked that. She loved it. Maybe I. Maybe I shouldn't have come. Why did you? Is it for the farm? After all these years, do you want it back? No, I don't want the farm. I only wanted to see it, to see it was in good hands. But that's not the main reason. Then what? There comes a time when you want to know what happened. To see how the story comes out. Well, that's the same for Jacob. Only he needs to know the beginning of the story. He needs to know why you went away. The answer wouldn't help him. Well, maybe that's not for you to say. You've stirred things up coming back. When you toss a stone in a pond, you get ripples. What are these for? There's only a few left. My health is none of your concern. It is if it affects my family. It doesn't. If you are ill, Jacob should be told a son needs to know about his father. It's too late for that. Then why have you come back if it's too late? You came back for a reason. If you lose your strength now, what a waste it will be. For all of us. Keep a good eye on your sister while we're gone. You know I will. But why can't we go with you? Because there are a lot of sick people in town, that's why. Why do you have to go? I explained that at breakfast, remember? Uh-uh. Your grandfather has to go to town, and so we're taking him. Why can't Papa take him? It's just better that I go, too. That's enough questions for one morning. Be good. Listen to your brother. We'll be back before dark. I might bring you some licorice from Mrs. Parkley's. Do you think they'll meet any robbers on the way? Is that all you think about? No. Come on, I'll make you some cocoa. I need to see the doctor. Well, why don't you come in? Thank you. He's with a patient right now. If I could give him your name. It's Whitting. John Whitting. Oh. You're not as old as I thought you'd be. Uh, you're Anna. I should have known. You resemble your father. I hope you're more talkative. 
Papa's always been fine with people he knows. Why don't you have a seat? Oh, Sarah asked me to tell you that she was going to Mrs. Parkley's store and that if you joined her there if you can. All right. I'll tell the doctor you're here. He's a hard man to understand. Just like your papa when I first met him. A witting family trait, I suppose. Oh, Papa's not that way now. Not since you came. Because we trust each other. John's secrets are bottled up all tight. Caleb will find them out, I bet. <laughs> He's been fascinated from the moment he found him in the barn. It's inspired him to write in that journal you gave him. Caleb's a good judge of character. He liked you the first time I saw you. Riding up in your yellow bonnet. <laughs> he did, didn't he? Mm, and I didn't. Well, you like me now, so... I love you now. I think I understand how Papa feels. When Mama died, I was angry that she went away and left me. Even though she didn't mean to. What do you hear from Justin? Only one letter this month. He sounds lost and a little frightened. A friend was killed the morning he wrote, and... Sarah, I'm so scared for him. Oh, of course you are. When the one you love is in trouble, you worry. You know, wishing you could make everything better. Knowing you'd do anything to help. Anything. How long since you saw someone? A year, maybe a little more. Uh, he gave me this. And what did he tell you these were for? For pain. Here. I didn't pay much attention. It didn't concern you. There are things that concern me more. Such as? Such as things left too long undone. Well, from what these pills tell me, what I can see for myself, you need to take better care of yourself. No strenuous labor. Your heart can't take that. A man has to do his share, pay his way. Now, I want you to take these same as you did those others. And I want to see you again in two weeks. If I'm still here. Two weeks. Now, you come into my office or I'll come and find you. I'll talk to Jacob and Sarah about your diet. No. I won't have you say anything to them about this. They're your family, Mr. Whitting. I said no! You're too stubborn to die, I can tell. No question he'll be around in two weeks. You two were having a serious talk. We were talking about when Mama died. About how angry I was because she wasn't there anymore. After Sarah came, I could forgive Mama. Well, some things can be forgiven. What did Sam say? Well, he said there was no reason for making this trip into town. There's nothing wrong with me that these pills can't cure. And what exactly are they supposed to cure? Nothing serious. Can't we be going back? Huh? Phone, if there's any word from Justin. Bye, darling. Bye bye. Bye, Anna. There's 
wind goes on and on. It's likely to be a cold Easter this year. We have a big ham for Easter. Yeah, I, I don't know I'll be here that long. You can't go. You just got here. I can leave when I want, Caleb. Caleb, John has his own life. But he's part of our life, too. Your life is your own, Caleb. I don't belong here. I do. I was born here, and Mama and Papa named me Cassie. Because that was my grandmother's name. Your grandfather knows that, Cassie. Your grandmother would have liked that you had her name. You sure you're in a position to talk about what Mama would have liked? She was my wife. Until you left her. Jacob. Stay out of this, Sarah, please. This is between us. Better it stays that way. No. The children have a right to know what kind of man you are. Don't do this. Not now. Then when? I've opened my home to him. I've been polite and respectful. When? It's the right time to tell this man what I think of what he did. Stop it. I will not allow you to air this in front of the children. You're frightening them. Sarah is right. I'm going for a walk. That's right. Leave. That's what you're good at. Let him go, Jacob. Don't go after him in anger. He's not walking away this time. And I will not have you taking his side. I'm not taking his side. I'm taking our family's side. We're going to. No, 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 no. This is between the two of them. Caleb is a fine boy. He's, he's taking good care of my friend here. You raised him well. Fathers do that for their children. I don't want to fight with you. I only wanted to see you to... to see what happened to you. I'll tell you what happened. You went away. And Mama was never the same. She came to hate this place. That began long before I left. I didn't leave. Your mother drove me away. That's a lie. She always blamed me for this life. It was more than she bargained for. The cold, the wind, the, the poverty. They wore her down, and she blamed me for it all. She hated the farm, and she hated me for tying her to it. I think you were the only person she loved. She told me you'd both be better off without me. I don't believe she said that. That's not true. You're just like her. Your mother had no forgiveness in her either. Yeah. You're a liar. No one calls me that. Not even you! Jacob! Get away from me! But you need help. My leg is broken. Set him down on the bed. Easy. Easy, easy. Let me get the pillow. Wait. Easy. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. How did this happen? I fell. Telephone to Sam, Caleb. Tell him we need him at once. We need to stop that bleeding. 
How did he cut himself? It was an accident. Papa? Sorry, Cassie. I'll be all right. The telephone's not working. I can do it. You've already done enough. If you want to help, go for the doctor. That would take too long. I've done this before. That leg's got to be set. Now, we can stand here and discuss it, or I can give your husband the help he needs. Yeah. All right. What should I do? I'll need strips of cloth long enough to tie. And Caleb, two sticks or poles the length of his legs. In the shed. Will this hurt him? Yes, but it can't be helped. We have some whiskey. Oh, get it. Cassie, please. Cassie, Cassie. Cassie. Um, you know that game that you like to play? Hide and seek? I think now would be a good time. I want to stay with Papa. Yeah, but by the time we find you, he'll be all better. I'm going to start counting. Will you find me? Yes. One, two, three. Slower. Four, five, six. Will these do? Yes, thank you. Oh, and Caleb, one more thing. I want you to find where Cassie is hiding and stay with her. Can't I stay here? No, no, go. <coughs> Sarah, I want you to do what I say, no matter. I want you to hold him steady while I straighten his leg. Can you do that? Yes. I'm sorry, Jacob. I'm truly sorry. I see you. But you haven't tried to know us. And we know nothing about you. I met Jacob just over nine years ago. His first wife, Catherine, died giving birth to Caleb. Oh, I thought you were... No. Anna and Caleb were hers. Jacob loved her dearly. She painted that picture. He loved his children, too. And he did what he thought was best for them. Your son put this ad in the paper. And it found its way to Maine. Needed. A kind woman to share a life with a widower and his two children. To make a difference. You came all the way from Maine? Yeah. All the way from Maine. And you. My wife was the only child of a, a Wichita merchant. She's the most beautiful woman I ever laid eyes on. So I've heard from those who knew her. Cassie said she loved me, but she had no love for this land. So it tore us apart. They say love's enough, but I'm not so sure. 
When the hard times come. When the money runs out. And the droughts seem never ending. And the bitter cold is more than you ever thought you could bear. Seems to me you need something more. Resilience. And trust. That those you care about will be strong enough to stay. To be there when you need them. And once the trust is broken... You can't set it as easily as you can a man's leg. Fever's lasting too long. He's warmer today than he was yesterday. Did you change the dressing? Yes, and I don't like the looks of it. The telephone line is still down. We need Sam. Tell me the truth. Are you well enough to do this? I can do what needs doing. I'll pack you something to eat. And where are you going? Your father needs a doctor. I can go too. I know the way if it gets dark. All right. Take the wagon. Now, in this weather, I may not be back until tonight, maybe tomorrow. It's better that Caleb stays here in case you need him. But I want to go. No, John is right. If I need help with your papa, you'll do me no good in town. Now you take care of your family, no matter what. I should have gone. Why do you think so? Because he may not be back. He leaves, papa says. That was a long time ago. He'll be back. Broken. He cut himself when he fell. Uh, Sarah dressed it, but his fever's still climbing. Infection? Uh, the telephone is out. Anna, you want to go along? Yes, but someone has to stay and he needs you. I'd be more useful here. If you need any help, Mrs. Simmons is always willing. Uh, Tell Papa I love him. Uh, he knows. But I'll tell him. We'll put your horse in the barn, take my automobile. It's perfectly safe. Mr. Ford knew what he was doing. I only hope you do. There's no place this piece of machinery can't take us. It's built to last. Yeah. Maybe, but it's not built for comfort, it's gold. A live horse is warmer. Next time, we'll put the horse in the automobile. Yeah. <laughs> oh, coffee. Please. You'll be 
fine. You did a good job on that leg. Sarah tells me you learned in the army. Maybe the single good thing to come out of that experience. I know what your son must be going through, Sam. Is there any news? But I have to have faith that he's safe and well. I tell myself no news is a good thing, but that's small comfort. Now, I want Jacob to stay off that leg. No work for at least a month. You might have to tie him down, but it has to heal. Well, we'll just have to hire someone to help. There's stock to tend and getting ready for spring planting and damage from the storms. Caleb can't do that and keep up with his schooling. I can work. Excuse me. You can't do the kind of work a place like this requires. It'll kill you. Ah, it's your opinion. I'm a doctor. My opinion counts. I owe it to them to help. Oh, is that what this is about? You work the farm, you die because of it, and it makes up for the past. Nonsense. Of course. Sam gave me some pills. Do they help? He says they do. I could argue the point. Thank you. What for? Setting your leg or helping you to break it in the first place? Beaver's gone. I'll be up before you know it. Well, I think Sam will have a thing or two to say about that. Well, it's work. And it's being done. Caleb is doing more than his share. John is feeding cattle, fixing fence. He's doing the best he can to help. I appreciate that. We've had a chance to talk some these past days. He worked cattle on a ranch in Wyoming for a time. Followed the harvest north for a number of seasons. Farming is all he knows, just like you. He's the only father you'll ever have. That's a fact. The question is, what to do with it? What are you looking at? Oh, everything. The farm. You know, there was a time I thought I'd, I, I'd never see this, this place again. Was it like this when you lived here? Oh, part of it. I planted a stand of walnut trees out there. We had a drought, and the barn burned down. We took the trees with it. That's the summer we went to Maine, to Sarah's house, except for Papa. Oh. He stayed here with the land. He, he never gave up on it. It's hard. Farming. Is that why you went away? Part of it, maybe. But then you got lost. I know that's the way you want it, but that's not the way it was. I wasn't lost. Maybe you didn't know you were lost. I know it isn't easy for you, Caleb. You want to like me, I'm your grandfather. But there's no way that you can possibly like what I did. People can change. Yes, but sometimes not before they hurt the people that they care most about. You mean Papa? Papa can change, too. 
I like you, Caleb. I love you, grandfather. to see Jacob today. Time he was on crutches, and I've got a pair for him. Well, he's bound to cause Sarah more trouble being up and around. <laughs> You're tired. I'm not complaining. You never complain. Maybe you should from time to time. <coughs> Get some rest. Doctor's orders. It's a telegram from the War Department. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's alive, but he's been injured. What does that mean? How bad is it? Dr. Sam, what does it say? Only that he's been wounded and they're bringing him home. Here? To the States, to a hospital. Where? Can we go to him? Can we see him? They say details to follow. Anna, I think you'd better come with me today. Let me take you home to your parents. I want to stay here. I want to be here when the details follow. Are you all right? Well, this telegram tells me he's safe now. Away from the fighting. It's good news, really. Don't overdo it. You might set yourself back. Yeah. These are only for when you need them. Well, here you are. A little worse for wear, but handsome as ever. Show me how to sit with these things, Sam. Back up to the chair. Put yourself down with your leg. Please take your supper, Sam. I've just made some of your favorite bread, and there's a chicken in the oven. Sorry, Sarah. May Parkley says there's a big storm on the way. She's never wrong. Yeah, just ask her. I'll give your love to Anna. Thank you. You telephone if you need me now. We will. You're in our prayers.
need more wood before the storm hits. And Matilda's about to fall. I should be out there. Everything's been taken care of. The wood, the mare. Anna said you'd be like a caged animal on those crutches. Better than bed. Staring at the ceiling. Thinking. Thinking? About what? The children. About when I was their age. Everything seemed easy. I went to school. I came back. I worked. Then he left. And all that changed. Things weren't like that ever again. Some things must have stayed the same. You still went to school? No. I stayed home after. Your mother kept you home? There was a farm to run. And she needed me. And you were there. I'm tired of school. Maybe I should quit and work at the farm like Papa did. You think that's wise? I have friends that have left school already. Did you go to school, Grandpa? I wanted to, but, but I, I couldn't. I bet that was fun. No, it wasn't, because I never learned to read or write. Ever? Oh, I learned a little bit in the Army, enough to get by. But school would have made my life much easier. Can you write enough to write letters? I only wrote three in my whole life, and I needed help with those. Did the people ever write back to you? No, Caleb. The people never wrote back, and I, I guess I can't blame them. I'm scared. Oh, now. Now it's just old man winter huffing and puffing. That's all. And there's nothing that he can do to us in here. Do you know any songs? Song? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no song. Everybody knows a song. And everybody else, maybe. Please. Oh. Well, there was a song. Don't you laugh. I promise. <laughs> uh, sleep, my child, and peace attend thee all through the night. Guardian angels, God will send thee all through the night. Soft. The drowsy hours are creeping, hill and vale in slumber sleeping. I, my loving vigil keeping all through the night. Angels watching ever round me all through. In the slumbers close around me all through the night. They should have all fears disarm thee. No foreboding should alarm thee. They will let no peril harm thee.
worried about Matilda in the bar. Maddie is fine. Go to bed. The idea of going out in the store. She's gonna fall any time now. If there's complications, she'll need me. I'll be careful, Sarah. Kayla. I have to go. You'll use the rope. You'll check on her and come right back to the house. All right, I promise. And put your hat on. What were you doing out so early? I went to check on Matilda last night, and the rope broke. So I spent the night in the barn. In that blizzard? The animals kept me warm. Why are you making the coffee? Isn't Sarah up yet? No, not yet. Sarah. Ask Sarah to bring me some of that coffee. We thought she was here with you. She's not in the kitchen. Sarah! Sarah! She's not in the house. Well, what would she go out for? Ah, you're cold enough already. I'll go. Inside. He can't do this. Grandfather can't do this. Why not? He'll die, Papa. I heard Sam tell him he'd die. Sam said he was fine. No, he said if he did too much, it would kill him. I have to go help, Papa. Sarah? 
Sarah. Sarah. Come over here. Sarah, can you hear me? She's alive, but barely. What was she doing outside? Looking for me, I think. We gotta get these wet clothes off. Caleb, we need some blankets. Round up as many as you can and put some in the oven so they can get warm. Hurry. Don't let her sleep. Sarah, can you hear me? It's Jacob, Sarah. I'm here with you. You can't sleep now. Sleep later, not now. Caleb, get me some coffee. Can you hear me? I'm so tired. I know. You're tired, but there's things to do. Cassie needs you, Caleb. We all need you, Sarah, so you can't sleep now, you understand? Stay awake! Stay awake! Have a sip of this. Something smells good. It smell isn't taste. I learned that a long time ago. I was a cook for a while on a ranch in Oregon. Not the best cook in the world, but nobody ever died on my watch. <laughs> At least nobody I ever heard of. Better. Mm. Warmer, too. You were close to dying out there. Mm. You know, my father used to say that when you die, you go to a place that feels like home. So, I always imagined that when that happened, I would see the rugged coast of Maine. Smell the salty sea air. Hear my three aunts, the unclaimed treasures, calling me into supper. But the remarkable thing is that last night it wasn't the sea I went to, but this land, this Kansas. I saw the blue sky. The wind sweeping across the summer grasses. The cattle grazing on the hill. And Jacob. And I knew this was my home. This was my heart. Jacob's a lucky man. Where is he? He's arrested. He was by your side for hours, and, and he had to get off that lake. I put the rope up again. This time it will hold. Let's hope that we won't need it again this year. Now, if we could just get Jacob on his feet. Then my work is done. 
I can get back about my life. My leg's coming around. Shouldn't be long now. Do you want to know what I want for my birthday? That's weeks away. What brought this on? Do you want to know? Yes, Caleb. What do you want? I don't want tools, or books, or even a horse of my own. You've always wanted your own horse. All I want is for you to forgive Grandfather so I can grow up to be like you. spend all our days in the place we love the most. I think of you there every day, through summer, fall, and winter, and spring, when the paintbrush bloom and cover the prairie. I see us there together, walking through those green meadows. Everyone's sleeping, I just need it. I don't know. I was reading Justin's letters, and I just couldn't bear it any longer. <laughs> Why haven't we heard anything more? If we just knew where he was. I know, I know. Why don't you take a walk, get some air? You've been pushing yourself too much. All right. Yes, yes. Oh, well, thank you for letting us know, Sam. You'll hear something more soon, I'm sure. Telephone us when you do. And give Anna our love. All right. Goodbye. <sighs> Justin's in a hospital in New York. They just heard this afternoon. How is he? Well, there's no word on his condition. But I would think if the news were bad, they would have said something in the telegram. I guess. It's all so fragile, this life. Anything can happen in the blink of an eye. I could have died in that blizzard. Don't even think that way. But it's true. Think of Justin and John. Probably more ill than we know. Time moves on. The moment passes. Then it's too late. That's a shame. Don't you think? Gone? Soon. <laughs> You're getting along in this contraption. And pretty soon there won't be much you need me for. I want to know. I want you to tell me everything. Please. I explained it. 
it all once, a long time ago. I wrote you a letter. And when there was no answer, I wrote another. And then a third. And that one came back with a note in your mother's hand that said, return to sender. I never knew. I don't blame her for that. She was unhappy. And I did leave. There's no way to explain that away. Try. This was not her life, this farm. She resented me for bringing her here and made it plain. I had ruined her chances for something better. Another man might have borne it, but I was young, selfish. And the life I saw ahead was nothing but unhappiness. I couldn't face it. So you left. I talked to her, tried to reason. But she'd have none of it. I told myself that we'd be better off apart. But her parents were dead. She had no place to go, so... So I went. It was that easy. It was the hardest thing, uh... I've ever done in my life, leaving her, leaving you, leaving the land. I hoped it would make things easier for everybody. But in all these years, I never found another place in this world to call home. I never found another person anywhere to love. I left all that here, and it was my loss. That's that. After you left, I begged to know what had happened, but Mama didn't want to talk about it. In time, she didn't want to talk about much of anything. Just sat there, day after day, looking down the road. That's why we stayed here, yes. In case you found your way back to us. After a while, I began to think I was so little. I began to think that somehow, something I had done had made this happen. You can't still think that. No. You've grown up fine. Any man would be proud to call you his son. And that's your mother's doing. Because you had no father. You came home to die, didn't you? Just didn't figure it'd be so hard. Well, can't let that happen. Dad? My son. My son. about as ready as an Easter ham can be. On the left, Cassie. Napkins on the left. I told her. She thought the right was more original. <laughs> Where are Jacob and John? Walking the farm again. Talking again. How long can they talk? A long time. They have a lot to say to each other.
What's wrong? What if Justin's not all right, Sarah? What if he's been hurt badly? I'm afraid how I might feel. Well, you won't know until you see him, will you? But it seems to me that love looks through the heart, not the eyes. Look who surprised me this morning. Anna? Anna! Justin. Thank <laughs> you. 